Hey, what's up, fellas? I've got a about a $200 bottle of osmium here. I take that back. This is gallium. This is about $200 worth of gallium. See, this bottle is almost full. And I've learned some things the hard way today. I wish I would have known before. But if you get water and gallium, it starts to slag up on you. I don't know if you can see that. I regret that, I did not know that, but the reason I have this bottle is I'm going to try and fill this copper tube full of gallium and um, proceed to bend it into any shape I want without the pipe kinking. I don't know how this is gonna go. I don't really have a funnel. I'm just gonna try to squirt it right in there and see what happens. Um, I do need a recovery tray. Well, I'll just try to be real careful here. I don't have a tray right now. It seems to be going in there pretty easily. I don't know how this stuff is gonna wet the copper. Uh-oh, it looks like I froze up there. It's gotta stay 86 degrees. Another weird thing that I learned is that osmium sticks to glass upon solidification. So if you spill some on some glass, it will stick to it i'll show you that in a second okay hey guys so what happened this gallium is now stuck oh there it went that thing was on there solid it's having a very hard time pulling that off of there for some reason gallium sticks to glass that's crazy we're going to seal this thing up i'm just going to go ahead and hand tighten it i'm not too worried about it and i have the uh caliper set here we're at 6.23 millimeters and um, I'm half tempted to try bending it in one section with the gallium in liquid form and we'll see what happens here I'm going to give it a good tight bend up oh, and look at that it kinked up no problem perhaps I wasn't full yet must have been a big air pocket in there or something huh so let's let it solidify, I guess. We'll bend it the other direction here. There's definitely something in this section. And again, I got a massive kink. Oops. That would explain why we have a gallium leak. So I'm going to tighten this up because as this solidifies, it's going to squirt some of the solid stuff out of there. Let me grab a set okay fellas I'm back I went ahead and threw this thing in the freezer for a minute because even though it would been running under cold water for a long time it was still had like a liquid feel to it so let's give this thing a test here I'm probably gonna have to get a vise to bend this and find a bigger wrench here we go we're gonna start right at the neck and see what happens Oh, that's beautiful. So far, so good, guys. Man, look at that. Oh, and it's soft. I bet we can do tighter than this. Let me uh, do a straight bend here. As hard as I can bend it. It won't do it. Sorry for the horrible footage here. Guys, this is awesome. Ugh. Okay, so I kind of botched it, but that's a nice tight bend. This is working. This is worthy of going to a larger pipe, basically. We haven't looked into the wetting effects yet. I'm very happy with this. I can hear it shattering in there. Did you hear that? It's like tin cry. Has, has any of you guys ever heard of tin cry before? Yep, yeah, that's tin cry. It's, it's making a noise. Listen, there's a good one. So now, of course, the next test, let me unfold this bend here. And we're gonna open this bad boy up. Let's say for some odd reason, this is the shape we wanted. Um, let's check the, uh, the size. Ooh, 
It expanded just like I knew it would. That's not always a bad thing though, because what that can do is harden the copper a little bit. Yeah, we were at 6.3 or something like that. We're now at a 6. About 6.55, we'll say. I'm pressing a little too tight there. So yeah, let's uh, heat it up. We'll... Okay, that's odd. It's been welded together. <laughs> it welded on me. Oh, of course, there was a nugget inside of there. Okay, let's... This is what I wanted to see. The fact that this can still move means it didn't expand beyond usability. That happened to me with ice. Ice expanded a piece of stainless steel beyond the point that compression fittings could be used, and it made it very hard to manage. So let's see how much of this we can get out of here without a huge fight. I'm just going to kind of start heating it. Probably won't come out of there very easily, I would imagine. And I did notice this stuff's a horrible conductor of heat, it seems. Because it just won't do what you want it to sometimes. Come on, man, I ain't got all day. Let's roll. All right. Pretty much disappeared down the hatch here. Probably going out of control here. Oh, there went a whole bunch of it right there. She burped. See, that little thin film's what worries me. That's unacceptable. Maybe enough heat and air would spray that out of there. I don't know. too much freaking heat this stuff boils at like 2,000 degrees so I think we're okay as far as uh, making something happen to it there it goes a big old slug just fell out Still coming out of there. Yeah, it's uh, a little sticky. So one thing I'm learning right away is you're gonna lose osmium in this process. Why do I keep calling it osmium? It's freaking gallium. Okay, so I was able to blow a lot of this out. Let's take a look inside. Ooh, I don't like what I see at all. This could cause problems in some applications for sure. Gallium isn't toxic, but uh, who knows if it really is or not. There appears to be a gallium layer, which is amalgamated or whatever you call that, amalgamed, amalgamed. I can't say it. Yeah, this is bad news. This is unacceptable. Let's try busting it open somewhere else. This stuff is hard as a rock now. The expansion definitely took the softness out of this copper. I can barely bend that. Ugh. Crazy. Definitely changed it. And again, we're seeing that gallium on the inside of the tube so did I waste two hundred dollars here I certainly spilt a crap load of this stuff here I'm gonna have to let this room cool off before I can get a hold of that so I don't know guys maybe with a good wash Trying to think what would really get the gallium out of there. There's got to be something that reacts corrosively with gallium that we could pump through the pipe afterwards. Uh, 
I can't see what we're looking at at the moment, but it looks like a nail in the coffin for this idea. I don't want this stuff in the line. This could mess up process control equipment and everything else. This sucks. So, there are alloys that we can make out of this gallium. I could buy some tin and uh, make some of the various alloys available with that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Definitely worked. It definitely worked. I'll give you that. If you can deal with the gallium being in there, the side here ain't so bad. I don't know, guys. I've got a small piece of stainless here that we're going to try. Definitely one thing to keep in mind is do not throw these containers in the hot water to melt them when you go to do this because water will leak into these containers and immediately start to react with the gallium. You see I got a little bit of water right there. Uh, it's gone now, but definitely a problem. You don't want to get water in gallium.